in general, what we're dealing with now is a very difficult time, at least in the medical device industry, to innovate. And when you look at it, there's all kinds of challenges. And uh, the if you look at what goes on at different levels, you got the government regulation, you got the state regulation, you got the county regulation, then you got the regulations within your hospital, and then you have no money. And that's what's going on. It's a perfect storm. Yeah, it, it is a perfect storm. And I think if you're going to get out of that storm, you can't do what we've always done. And so we felt that we had to create an environment within the Institute where we become much more efficient. Uh, we have regulations, but they're reasonable regulations. I mean, you get in some environments, you'll have impossible regulation, you have inappropriate regulation, uh, and then you'll have fair regulation. And there's a spectrum in between and within the same institution, uh, particularly large institutions like university settings. Uh, there's so much regulation, and the regulations sometimes are inconsistent with one another. What drives you crazy? Because you don't know what to do. Um, so anyway, the environment here, and what we tried to create was an environment where all this could be expedited quickly but safely. And so that's what we're here for, you know, to develop technology in the most safe and efficient way and hopefully have a, a application to patients. We're not doing basic research. There's enough basic research. Basic research is good, and it's well-funded. Clinical research is not well-funded, and that's what we need to get funded. Talk about clinical outcomes, which we all want to know about. In other words, we want to know, did that operation, did that technology benefit the patient? Nobody really pays to have that followed. you think the NIH would do that. Uh, they do very little of it. Uh, they do probably 95% is basic research. They do not do much epidemiologic research, and they certainly do not do clinical outcomes research. So who's going to do that? Well, hospital can't do it. Patient can't do it. The insurance companies won't do it. Uh, so nobody's doing it. But that's really what this country needs. We have to know when we give a patient a drug or we do a new procedure or implant a new device, uh, we have to know the outcomes. Part of the problem with that is people say, and you hear it all the time in the paper, well, that wasn't tested. Well, that's not true. First of all, that's rarely happens. I would venture to say that happens maybe 0.5% of the time. What they're saying is that you can use a technology or a device in a patient and there's absolutely no change. It could be as small as the color. And they say, well, you didn't test that color. <laughs> yeah, you, you did because it's not needed. But you could spend a year testing a color or some dye, and, uh, and they do that. Well, does that really impact the functionality of that? Uh, there are some dyes we know that are toxic. Well, we don't use those. So uh, that's what I'm talking about. And they argue within the um, FDA uh, amongst themselves you know, what's appropriate, what's inappropriate, what do you have to test, what do you not have to test. But if we err, it's on the side of too much testing. You can prove safety without a prolonged, very complicated study by many different ways. And uh, a lot of times those ways are very short of an implant. You can do it by bench testing, you can do it by animal testing. Uh, so. It's, it's reached a point where we cannot afford to innovate in medical devices in the United States. You can't do it, and that's why so many things have moved offshore.